What's going on, Warriors? It's your boy, Lionheart, and um, <sighs> Happy New Year. Today is the first of the first, 2022. Let's see how this year goes, yeah? 2020, that was the game that we didn't want, but we got it anyway. And then 2021 was essentially expansion DLC for 2020. DLC that we definitely didn't want, but we got it anyway as well. Let's see what 2022 is. Let's hope it's a brand new game and it's a good game. Although I doubt it because I just think it's going to be more of the same. Please, please let me be wrong. But, Happy New Year. We're here, we made it, and we're going to make the best of it. Positive energy. Positive energy into the world comes back to us. So yeah, we're going to start off my first video, 2022. Being a top 10 of the best games of last year, 2021. Let's start this off. Monster Hunter Stories 2, Wings of Ruin. What an amazing game, man. Come out on Nintendo Switch. The first uh, Monster Hunter Stories came out on the iPhone. And I actually bought it for £20 on the iPhone. Right? So when I heard it was coming out on the Switch, guaranteed buy. The only problem I had with that was I was... Drowning in video games. I kind of still am right. So I did buy it a little bit late I didn't buy it on release. I bought it like I think it was a week after it was released or just over a week Not two weeks And I bought it with another game which we'll get into that because that other game that I bought it with is in my top 10 as well So yeah wicked game Awesome customization. I like the little updates. They did on the game. They, they fixed the um, character models uh, they put like some really cool new armors in the game uh, the multiplayer where you can play with people is so cool uh, you know it's essentially it's like a monster hunter game like any normal monster hunter game except with this one you do play with monsters which are the monsters essentially and you find them in the open world as eggs you take care of the eggs you hatch the eggs and the monster that comes out is like your pet and you take care of that pet and then you fight alongside that pet. And a kind of battle system is not the way you play like an action uh, RPG or action adventure game like Monster Hunter. The normal one like World or Monster Hunter Rise. This game is where you play with kind of like a, it's like a rock paper scissors uh, system. Whereas let's say I'm fighting against a monster. And the monster does a power attack on me. I can only beat your power attack with a speed attack. Now if I use a technique attack. Then the technique attack will lose to power attacks. Because there's like free, a free way attack system. Power, speed and technique. Right. And so if an enemy is going to do a speed attack. A power attack. I can beat the power attack with speed. But then if somebody's going to use speed against me. I have to use technique to beat the. Um, to beat speed. And if somebody is using. Power. I use speed. If someone's using technique. I beat that with power. And if someone's using power. I will use speed to beat it. So it's kind of like a three way. You know. Rock paper scissors. How you play that game and the system. But the one thing I really loved about the game was the the story. They made the characters more involved. They more focused on the actual story. Right. I do think that game did suffer a bit. Because they released the game way too soon after Monster Hunter um, Rise. Right. Like way too soon. Within like the same. Within I think it was three months or something like that. But hey, is what it is, right? Awesome game, my number 10. 
Number nine. Far Cry 6. Now that game is godlike. I love that game. I feel like that because it's my first Far Cry game. Yeah. And the culture of that game is so beautiful to me. The music, the main character, the whole characters, the adventure that you're on, the fact that you're like a you're a revolutionary, right? You're a they how do they say it? Garia, yeah, fighting uh, for the rebel army against the oppressive government, right? Which essentially it is, but it's like it's set in a place called Yara, but it is it's kind of based on the Cuban Revolution, yeah, like Fidel Castro, um, that era. I feel it's really based off of that template. But they just don't say it directly, of course. But it, I feel that it is. And it's just... It's like a, a power fantasy. You know, that you are revolutionary. Saving your people from a murderous, oppressive government. Saving your people. And it's got the music. And it's got the weapons. And the bad guys are real bad guys. So you feel the motivation to just end them. Bro, that game is amazing. And the open world, and you can fly in helicopters, and all different type of vehicles, and people talk to you, and you feel like you have purpose in that game. That game is a good game, bro. I really like it. That's why the game is my number nine. It's just a shame that the company itself, Ubisoft, is such a shithouse company. But, you know, they're getting their comeuppance and the gamers, we won't let them get away with it. So we're on them. Number eight, Persona 5, Strikers. Now, I only just started playing that game, right? That game, it's actually a continuation. I thought it was like a fun game, but it's actually a continuation of Persona 5, wow! It's actually after the game. So it's just got more story in it. It's just got, like, but the system is is different. It's got a different, more um, action, adventure, kind of like more. How can I say it? It's like Sengoku Buzzra kind of style but i love persona for the characters the characters and the story so if you give me more of that i'm a happy guy i'm easy to please when it comes to persona because i'm a persona 5 monster monster bro so yep yeah, that game is um that's going to be my number eight number seven guilty gear strive now that game i love um, Guilty Gear. Guilty Gear is actually my is it my is my first fighting game that I actually owned that I bought. It was I think it was it was Guilty Gear XX. It was the one with Eno where Eno was the boss and she had like a super that was unblockable and you had to kind of guess the pattern. Once it comes up, it flashes on the screen for about a second. And then you have to dodge it or get out of the way of it. And if you're in the wrong position, you're going to get got and it's over. And then when she beats you, she does like a a guitar solo and she riffs on the guitar. And it, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful guitar riff, but it pisses you off because she just beat you with like one super. That game was... Um, sorry. Guilty Gear Strive. I was reminiscing about Guilty Gear X. X. So Guilty Gear Strive... They've changed the way they started to do story. The story mode in that game is incredible, bro. For a fighting game, the graphics are amazing. The music, wonderful. The, the gameplay is actually really good. There's not many characters in that game, but the characters are so different to one another. There's so much detail and layered system into each character. You're really going to see a situation where people are going to play like 
all the characters in the game or play with multiple characters because essentially if you play one character you're essentially a specialist in that character that's the type of game that is but the most thing i love about that game is the characterizations of the characters and the story mode yes and it's got a lot of single player elements to it as well so yep yeah, gear this drive number seven on my top 10 games of 2021 now let's move on to number six, Monster Hunter Rise. Now that game is a game changer. Well, the game changer was Monster Hunter World. That's the game that I feel changed everything. And it's Capcom's number one selling game. The game has almost sold 20 million units. 20 million units. And when I say that, I'm not talking about the Iceborne DLC as well. I'm talking about Monster Hunter World. That game is insane, bro. Now, Monster Hunter Rise, it kind of adds more to Monster Hunter. So, the, I think, if anything, I feel like this game actually had more system. It had more options in that game. The only thing I say that that game has a little bit of a problem is when the end game. The end game doesn't feel as valuable as Monster Hunter World, but that's because the the needs of players' attention has changed. So when I play that game in the end game, I'm playing it just for fun, but I don't feel obligated to play it because I don't feel like there's anything that I'm getting rewarded for for playing it more out of the like what I would like to. Because there's some games where you get rewards, that there's more things that is added to the game. So you want to keep playing to obtain those certain things. In this game, that's not really a thing in Monster Hunter Rise. But the game itself is awesome. The monsters, the world, the customization, the builds that you can create, the adventure, the multiplayer when you play with your friends... Monster Hunter Rise is such a beautiful game. That is the kind of game that I would recommend to anybody that likes action adventure games. So, yep, Monster Hunter Rise, that gets our number six. Number five, this gear, the Fight of Destiny. Now, that game, how many hours have I put into that game? I want to say 400 hours? The game came out last year, like mid last year. I, 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 I want to say 500. Let's say 500 hours. I put 500 hours into that game. That game has got an unlimited damage ceiling. The story is not a serious story. The story is pretty goofy. But the characters are so funny, man. They're so entertaining. When you're playing that game, it's such a... It's a fun experience. Like, I can't pull it into words properly. But it's just the music. It's the battle system. It's seeing the numbers. It's creating... Making your character... You can... You visually see the results of your work. And I love games like that. Where you're playing the game and you're making your character stronger, you're making your armor stronger, you're making weapons stronger, you're making your character stronger, and your damage, you can hit into the billions in that game. Not millions, billions. Now, you can hit an enemy and do over one billion damage with one hit. Enemies don't just die in that game because the, the health pools are incredible. Right, battles are proper battles in this gear six. Bro, I love that game. And there's so many characters in that game, bro. And the game is in 3D. That is a little bit of issue with the game because sometimes the game it struggles to well the switch struggles to deal with the graphics of the game. So I don't know whether the game wasn't optimized properly or the game is just too powerful for the console. But I can't be, because, you know, games like, I don't know, I don't know, Xenogear Chronicles and all these type of games look pretty awesome and they handle okay. 
So I don't know what it is exactly, but the the game's the console struggles that game a little bit. But other than that, the game is a good time. Like I can't really say anything bad about the game because the gameplay is such a wonderful experience. So this gear six, the fight to destiny, that game is my number five. Number four, Scarlet Nexus. What a game. The definitive anime game. Beautiful world. Always feels like there's something to do. You always feel like you're a part of something. The combat is hell of fun. The music is wicked. The combination attacks is superb, bro. I can't even think of anything else to say other than superb. I love that game. That's a game that I bought it because it's an anime game. And the people that made it made... Um, God Eater and games like that and what was the other game there was a vampire game that they made but I can't remember what it's, what it's called but they made a vampire like game it'll come to me it'll come to me but yeah the Scarlet Nexus is amazing and it's the characters there's so many characters in that game and you can go on like these missions bonding missions with these characters where you get like story with each individual character so you can learn more about them and you start to care about these characters and when you go into battle with them you can do like um team supers and team combinations and the game will go into like a little cut scene where you'll do like a tag team move with your character and that game is it's a feel good game even though the story's actually got a really good story in it as well which i didn't expect i didn't expect the game to have a, a good story as it did to have as many cutscenes as it does the music the combat didn't expect it to be the game surpass my hopes for that game right that's why the game is number four on my list it's a hell of a surprise and the developers are continually supporting that game by putting out dlc for that game the new dlc that is for that game i haven't bought the new dlc yet because I'm struggling with, as I said, I'm playing a lot of other games, right? But I'm definitely going to be buying the DLC for that game. But yeah, that is a game that I would definitely recommend. Scarlet Nexus, godlike game, my number four. Number three, Resident Evil Village. Wow. Let me start off. Lady Demetrescu. Thank you. Thank you. Capcom, I appreciate that character so much. Resident Evil Village. Now, that game had so much to live up to because of Resident Evil 7. And the game actually succeeded. Now, I could see that they struggled a little bit with this game, right? Because the game is kind of different genres it's a horror game it's a suspense game it's an action game it's a pure horror game because in that game you play with um ethan and he's going to save his daughter because daughter got kidnapped by this cult this weird family or this weird people and then you find out when you get there that you have to deal with essentially bosses and their bosses have been split into of the family they have been split into different households and then one household let's say for example lady demetrescu when you go to her place her castle essentially it's a whole gameplay system in her area and it's essentially resident evil 2 where you're constantly being chased by her and her daughters and you have to run away from them while solving puzzles then you have another um place another building or whole house that you go to mansion where you have to deal with a guy called eisenberg and in eisenberg's one it is what's eisenberg's one it is a 
It's a puzzle solving adventure. And it's essentially Resident Evil 5. Then you have to deal with another um, house, like a haunted house. And that one is pure horror. You don't have any weapons. And you literally just have to hide and run. And you don't know what's around any corner. And you just feel it's just pure horror. It's essentially like Resident Evil 7, the beginning the first house you get to and you've got no weapons and you have to deal with Maya yeah Maya right it's essentially that and then there's another um, house that you have to do not house but it's a area you have to deal with another person and that person essentially the game is Resident Evil 6 and it's just pure action and adventure where you're shooting and just fight lots of different enemies. So I feel like the game has got different genres in it. Because they didn't know where to go with it. They didn't know whether to make it a horror. Whether to make it a pure horror or action. Or whichever. So they just did everything and split into households. It's done very, very smart, man. But the game itself is incredible. The graphics. There's a lot of different characters in there. The, the story in Resident Evil. There's actually story new story and it also builds on Resident Evil 7 it picks literally off from where Resident Evil 7 left off with a twist incredible game I love it and if it wasn't for the next two games that I'm going to mention Resident Evil Village would normally have been my number one or number two Maybe number one. Yeah. <laughs> so, that was my number three. My number two. Tales of Arise. Wow. That game, I cannot express what I feel for that game. Well, I can actually, one word. Beautiful. The combat, the story. The characters, the world you inhabit, the cause you're fighting for. That game, I did not expect that game to be so wonderful. You can have lots of different costumes that you can wear on the characters. You can have your characters look so many different ways. You've got like different techniques, different combinations. It's a Tales game, right? And I was worried because the game kept on getting stopped and then started. And then the game, uh, they showed trailers for that game. And then the game went away for like a year or two. And then they released the trailer and it would go away. And then it would come back. And then the trailer that they would show would look completely different. But the end result, Tales of Arise, my number two game of 2021. Absolutely beautiful game. I love that game. That is a game that I enjoy so much. It makes me feel good. I feel like I'm playing a video game when I play that game. I feel good. I feel a sense of purpose when I'm playing that game. And I love the combat and I love the characters. My number two. My number two. Tales of Arise. Number one. Final Fantasy 7 Remake. Integrate. Now, you say, how can Integrate be my number one? When I don't have a PS5. I haven't played it. It is an enhanced version of Resident Evil 7 Remake. With Luffy in it. With brand new story. Building on Resident... Uh, I'm sorry. Building on Final Fantasy 7 Remake. Bro, if Resident, if I'm sorry, I keep saying Resident Evil. I've got Resident Evil Village on the brain, man. If Final Fantasy Seven, I think it was Resident Evil Seven, and Final Fantasy Seven. That's why I keep on mixing it up. Sorry, but Final Fantasy Seven Remake. The game came out this year. It'd be my number one. If the game comes out this year. It's gonna be my number one. If it comes out in two thousand twenty-three, 
it's going to be my number one and so on and so forth. Every year that they release a new version, it's going to be my number one because Final Fantasy VII Remake is the most godlike game I've ever played. The best game I've ever played is Devil May Cry. Nothing can ever take the place of Devil May Cry 5. But um, Final Fantasy, yeah, I wanted to say Resident Evil 7. Final Fantasy 7 Remake, if it wasn't for Devil May Cry, Resident Evil Final Fantasy 7 Remake would be my number one of a game ever, ever. But because of Devil May Cry 5, Final Fantasy 7, it's going to be the second best video game I've ever played in my entire life. But it is my number one game of 2021. That game is incredible. Let me just say to you this. When I got to the slums and I heard the music of the slums, I was overwhelmed. I don't know whether it was, you know, 2020, like the, what happened in 2020, or something. I maybe I was just suppressing emotions, but I was crying, man. I was so emotional when I got to the slums. I don't even know what that feeling was. But I was happy and I was sad and I was overwhelmed all at the same time. Final Fantasy 7, that game hits different, bro. Seeing Cloud, Tifa, Barrett, Aerith, Barrett, Red 13, Nanaki, Midgar, The Slums, Seventh Heaven. I'm speechless. Just thinking about it, it just blows me away. It blows me away, man. Final Fantasy VII Remake Integrate, my number one game of 2021. That's it. I can't wait to get a PlayStation 5 just so I can play that game. And I'm going to play that game into oblivion. I cannot wait. So, yeah, that was my top 10 games of 2021 what do you guys think do you guys agree do you disagree please in the comment section if you put your top 10 games of 2021 we'll talk about it we'll talk about it i may even reconsider some games on my list because there may be some games that i've missed i don't know but comment section please let me know and yeah so, I just want to say, Happy New Year. We made it to 2022. Life is good. We've got to be good people. That's it. Be positive. Be good to the person next to you. Do your best every day. And stay safe. Happy New Year. Take care.